Congratulations on becoming a U.S. citizen. Now that you are a U.S. citizen, there are a few things you need to do after naturalization. Be sure to watch the whole video so that you don't miss anything. There are a few processes that are slightly different right now because of the pandemic, and I'm going to share how to navigate that in today's video. Before you do anything at all, I want you to make a photocopy of your naturalization certificate. Ideally, you scan it so that you have a copy of it in the cloud and then whenever you need to, you can just hit print. And I'll explain why it's a good idea to have a copy in just a second. Once you've done that, here are the four things you should do and I would do them in this order and you'll see why as I explain the steps. First, as soon as you become a U.S. citizen, apply for a U.S. passport. There are two reasons to do this right away. One, now that you are a U.S. citizen, even if you hold citizenship of another country, you must use your American passport to enter and leave the United States. And if you happen to be a dual citizen of another country, do not use that passport to go in and out of the U.S. The other reason to do this right away is lengthy passport backlogs. Before the pandemic, you could get a passport within a week. I got my passport within 10 days in 2019. Currently, as of the filming of this video, the State Department's website says that routine processing can take up to 16 weeks and expedited processing 12 weeks. People are seeing all sorts of timelines across the country. Some are getting them in five weeks, some are getting them in two, three months. The best timeline I've seen is someone that I know in New York who got their passport three and a half weeks after applying for it. The reason I asked you to keep some photocopies of your naturalization certificate at home is that when you apply for a U.S. passport, you have to mail them your original naturalization certificate. But don't worry, you get it back as soon as your passport is approved and issued. For a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to apply for a U.S. passport for the first time, check out this video. It will tell you everything you need to know from start to end. And check out the comment section. You'll see people sharing timelines from all over the country. And you'll get a better sense of the backlog from real people in real time. Once you've applied for your passport, the next thing that you need to do is update your social security record. Now, when you apply for a job, many employers use a system called E-Verify to check that you are allowed to work in the US. So you wanna make sure that your most updated status is in the system. Your record is also tied to social security benefits, so if you don't update your status, your wages may not get recorded correctly. Lastly, if you changed your name when you became a US citizen, then you really need to make sure that you do this step and do not skip it. Not doing this can delay your tax refund and cause other issues. Once you update your record, you will get a new card in the mail and your number stays the same and this is completely free to do, but please don't skip this step. Before the pandemic, you would wait 10 days after your oath ceremony and then you would simply go to your local social security office with your naturalization certificate and a new passport and you could update your record in person. Now, full disclosure, I did not update my own social security record until recently and I became a US citizen in 2019. Now, I fully intended to do it sooner. In fact, I had planned to do it in early 2020, but then the pandemic happened and all the social security offices stopped offering in-person appointments. Because I work for myself, not updating my social security record immediately was not a big deal, but I really don't recommend waiting this long because it can cause issues. So what is the process to do this right now? In-person appointments at local social security offices are limited and for emergency purposes only. A few months ago, I called the local social security office in Brooklyn, New York, and told them I wanted to update my social security record. And they said I could do it via mail, but I would have to send them either my original US passport or my original naturalization certificate. And I really didn't want to send my original documents, so I decided to wait a little bit. The person on the phone said that if I urgently needed to update my record because I got a job with the government or needed to access social security benefits, then I could get an emergency appointment. But as I didn't meet this criteria and it wasn't really an emergency, um, my only option was to do it by a mail. And so I decided to wait on it a little bit. Last month, I moved to Connecticut. And so I called the Stanford, Connecticut social security office. They said I could send them a photocopy of my naturalization certificate 
and a photocopy of the front page of my US passport, which is different than what Brooklyn said. The Brooklyn office wanted originals. The Stanford office said that I simply needed to fill out a form for a replacement for my social security card, which I will link to in the description below, along with photocopies of the front page of my passport and my naturalization certificate. And she asked if I could also send them my original health insurance card. Now I happen to have multiple copies of my health insurance card, so that I didn't mind sending. And so that's what I did. I sent that to them, the completed form, along with the photocopies of the two things I mentioned and my original health insurance card. And they said they would return it when I get my social security card. 10 days later, I got my new social security card in the mail. And then about a week after that, they sent the photocopies I sent them of my naturalization certificate and the front page of my passport back, but I did not get my health insurance card back. And I'm wondering because it's such a small card that they even notice it in the envelope to begin with. So it's a bit of a bummer. I didn't get that card, but it's not a huge deal because I have a copy, but I was thinking I might give them a quick call to see if maybe they've found it, but if not, it's really not a big deal. So here's what I recommend for you. Go to this web page and type in your zip code and find the nearest social security office to you. Give them a call and ask them how you can update your social security record. Now, as you can see, I got a different answer from Brooklyn than I did here in Connecticut. So depending on what they tell you, you might be able to update your social security record as easily as I was able to here in Connecticut. It's possible you may even be able to get an in-person appointment because policies are changing every day and they're also very different in different cities and different states. Personally, if you can mail them photocopies like I did, then I would do it by mail. But if they want originals, I personally would prefer to go do it in person. Um, not sure why, because I've sent my naturalization certificate to the passport agency in the past and not had a problem with that. But given that my health insurance card did not come back to me, I would recommend either doing this in person or being able to send photocopies. So call your local office and find out what the process is. And it didn't take very long at all. The third thing I want you to do is register to vote. Now that you are a US citizen, you can vote. And I highly encourage you to exercise your right to vote. Now, in order to vote, you must be registered to vote in the state that you reside in. Now, some of you may have already done this at the day of your oath ceremony. There's, there are usually people walking around or there's a booth where you can register to vote on the spot on the day of your oath ceremony. So if you already took care of it, skip over this and go to the next step. But for those of you that haven't, you simply go to this webpage on vote.gov, select your state from the dropdown and click find out how to register. Now, in my case, it takes me to the election website for Connecticut, where there are a few quick questions in an online form. It takes just a couple of minutes. And then about a week later, I got a confirmation that I was registered to vote. And that confirmation comes in your physical mailbox um, at your home. This next step is for people with children. If you have children that are under the age of 18 and green card holders, they may have automatically acquired U.S. citizenship. You can apply for a U.S. passport for them or a certificate of citizenship, which is called the N-600. While you're not required to get this certificate of citizenship because a passport serves as proof of citizenship, but only as long as it's valid. So if a passport expires, then it no longer serves as proof of citizenship. So on the off chance that that happens, it's always prudent and smart to also have this certificate of citizenship on hand. So I recommend you go ahead and file N-600 for the certificate of citizenship in case you ever need it as proof of citizenship for a state issued ID, like a license or a passport renewal and so forth. Moving on to the next item. Now that you are a US citizen, you have the ability to sponsor family members. Now, of course, this is optional. It's not something that you have to do, but I wanted to include it in this video in case it's something that interests you. Now, there are very few family members that you can actually sponsor. You can sponsor your spouse, your minor or unmarried children, and your parents as immediate relatives. That means that they get priority. Now this usually takes anywhere from one to two years, but it can be a little longer depending on processing delays. You can sponsor your adult or married children, but they're not considered immediate relatives. So there is a bit of a wait and can take quite a while. You can also sponsor your siblings, but again, they are not considered immediate relatives. So there is quite a wait depending on which country you're from. You're looking at anywhere from 10 plus years. 
you cannot sponsor your aunts, uncles, grandparents, or cousins, um, really no extended family other than the categories I've already described. If you're interested in sponsoring your parents, check out this video as it walks you through the entire process. And this process is very similar for other family members that are also considered immediate relatives. Again, congratulations on becoming a US citizen. Now you know what you need to get to right away, so go ahead and follow these steps. And if you found this video helpful, hit the like button below and be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future updates. I'll see you in the next video.